So I said, I've seen this all before. They said, oh, sit down. I said, okay, I'm sitting down. They said, yes, we're just trying to connect with our higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. I said, what is your higher consciousness? They said, our higher consciousness is that part of us that transcends this world of form. Hmm. I said, well, if I was to tell you that I could give you a clue into the proper ingredients and the key to unlock that connection to the one who created the form and who gives purpose and meaning to the form so that you can truly transcend the form, would you be willing to listen? Who? <laughs> Back in Washington Square Park, this ain't nothing new. It's 68 to me all over again. But back then I was. But now it's just. <laughs> but back then it was. In a... Have you ever been? Have you ever been to Electric Lady Land? Jimi Hendrix. Yo. <laughs> so. They said, yes, please sit down. I said, no, I don't want to sit down without your permission. Sit down. I said, how many in your, in your remembrance, in your recollection, in your meditation, how many realities of a higher power is there? They said one. They said one. It's very difficult for anybody to say more than one. Because I used to wonder, I, I was coming through Armand Jordan. And I was, we was on a delay flight. It was all delayed, everybody was delayed. And I was there with one of the biggest Hindu gurus in the world. He, this guy got a million followers. He that guy you see with the bald head. I was there with him in Armand Jordan. We was delayed, this was destiny. So I told him, we started talking, and he, you know, we recognize each other. Due respect. I told him, I said, me and you the same. And he know I'm Muslim. I said, me and you the same. And he said, yes, we are. I said, now you explain to me what I mean. Since you saying, yes, we are. He said, you as a Muslim see everything in the oneness. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. He said, I see the oneness in everything. I said, let me buy you another cup of tea. <laughs> I said, let me buy you another cup of tea. Because beyond the veils, in the reality, it all goes back to one. All goes back to one. In the Allahi, in the Rajiun, from Allah we come into Allah, we shall return. But in reality, once we transcend the Sharia, we have to obey the laws of Allah. Anybody that tells you they don't have to obey the laws of Allah, run away from them. If I start telling you don't do what Allah say, get away from me. We are all bound by the Sharia. You don't believe me? Read, read the Ishad, Ishad by Sheikh Musafir. He said clearly in there, I just read it. That's my Sheikh. He said we are all bound by the Sharia, by the laws. Anybody tell you you can? No. Uh, but after the Sharia come the Tariqa. Tariqa. What does the Tariqa mean? It means the path or the way. Literally. The path and the way of what? The path and the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you can never get to the Tariqa. This ain't me talking. This Sheikh Musa talking. I read this in the Israel in the, in, the, in, the, in the Sufi wisdom. Sufi master. 
You can never get to the tariqah without going through the sharia. It can't be. Once you get to the tariqah, the tariqah Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now it is about following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not in how he look, not in how he dress, even though I don't belittle those things in the least. But had Rasulullah sallallahu only meant that when he said, I leave behind two things, my sunnah, the book of Allah and my sunnah, he would have not been applying that to women because hopefully y'all can't grow no long beard like we can. And y'all can't, y'all ain't supposed to wear the dress of the men. So when he said, I leave behind my sunnah, he wasn't talking only to men. He was talking to actually y'all. You know why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu so, said so. there are three things of this dunya in which I love. Mm. Come on now. Y'all in Brooklyn now. He said I love Atta. I love Atta. I love the scent. I love the smell good. That's what he said. He said I love Atta. What he said? He said, I love Atta. I love it. I love it. What did he say? I didn't say it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said he loved Atta. And he said, I love Salat. I love praying to my Lord. Especially in the, in the night. It's a coolness to my eyes. And he said, I love women. Didn't he say that first? No, but I reversed it for a purpose. Oh, good. I <laughs> saved the best for last. <laughs> if I had said that first, they wouldn't have get this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> women first. <laughs> now, the Orientalists have taken this to mean... They take it like, like Rasulullah Sallallahu just had this insatiable desire for women. That's what they take it. That's how they try to corrupt the people and keep them away from Muhammad Rasulullah. They don't care if you say la ilaha illallah. But they don't want you to ever say Muhammad Rasulullah. So they keep trying to corrupt your, your idea of what that means. Why did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he loved women? Not for no lustful purposes. Because when your spirit transcends from your body, all of the lust and cravings and desires of this world are left behind. <coughs> so Rasulullah Sallallahu was not talking about in a lustful sense. Why did he love? Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said in the Quran, "Reverence the womb that bore you." Reverence. Every cookbook, every time I give a cookbook, we say this in the opening cookbook. Reverence the woman before you. We must respect our women. We must. We must honor them. We must give them all the respect that they do. Because all of us came through the womb of a and Allah says, reverence the womb before you. So he said, I love scent, I love prayer, and I love women. So when I tell this to my wife, I say, two out of three, men. <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough. <laughs> and she, it's up to her to figure out which one that I ain't talking about. She know I'm always carrying my oil and always making my prayer. <laughs> Uh, now you get it. So, it is an honor and a pleasure. I'm telling you all from the deepest recesses of my heart. It is an honor and pleasure to have Shaker here tonight. I mean, it's an honor for me. This is this is this is spiritual. She is spiritual royalty. I'm telling you. Well, we all are. Uh, I mean, that's what your sheikh is saying. Uh, Every human being is spiritual royalty. Uh, like Every human being has the nasty sultani. Uh, 
the self. You gonna sit me back down? Like you gonna I'm gonna sit you back down. Back down. <laughs> I had to carry it for a minute, but I'm tired. You take the guitar. <laughs> yeah, and I think we're coming to that in in our evolution of humanity, because uh, that feeling that some have it, some don't. Uh, some are privileged, some not. This is going to oh, dissolve in the next 500 years. We're going to see such radical change. And one of them is they're, it's going to come through the spirit. Nice. This is what we've been missing uh, in, in guidance. We need to be guided by the spirit. We need to be educated spiritually. And, um, and that doesn't mean just, you know, like go to catechism and all that. It's something much deeper. And that's what the tarikas carry, because they carry the real human divine knowledge. Right. And they carry the knowledge that humanity is divine and right. is in the kingdom. Right. Everyone is, uh, the, you might say, the child or the servant of the king and the queen. Absolutely. Yeah. What was that? I, this was kabuchi. I don't know. Nowadays, young folks be feeding me all type of stuff. I don't know what they're giving me. <laughs> that's good for you. They and want you what, to live another uh, 40 years. That's what they keep years. telling me. They be giving me. But, that's but it's your good. daughter. This is, yeah, they're like, yeah. Up the they're like, yeah. They're like, yeah, Shake, shake drink this. <laughs> yeah, Abu, drink this. Daddy, drink this. I don't know what the hell I'm drinking. But, you do but they that. say it's good for me, so bismillah. 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 And if y'all see me acting any way that's crazy, blame it on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's it, to honor each other as each as a, a servant of the Sultan. And, um, um, and even deeper than that, find the Sultan within. Right. Uh, that's who lives in each of us, that's who's here. So we are in the presence of the king or right. the queen if right. you're a woman <laughs> it's the queen um her story as they say his story her story allah has created everything in pairs right. in creation and then right. beyond creation there is no gender so right. every gender has to come beyond gender every every attribute has to come to essence so we have to come to that place in ourselves where we don't have an attribute, where we just belong to God, and God brings us where God wills, and, and shows us the way, and takes care of us. And trusting in God, that's another one, very, very important, to trust God, right trust right. Allah. Right. If we don't trust Allah, we're, we're not trusting anything because we don't really trust ourselves. Right, I don't know. And we live in a state of fear. And someone asked me the other day, when we were in Washington, you know, how do you overcome fear? Well, really, the way to overcome fear is trust in Allah. Mm. But to trust Allah, we have to come to know Allah. We have to come closer mm. to Allah. So coming to the shaykh right, is the door. Right, I don't know. And Following the tariq is the way. Right, right and the Sharia, we never leave the Sharia. But the difference is, as, as what Effendi, Musafir Effendi said, you have the Sharia of the Sharia. Yes. You have the tariq of the Sharia. Right, you right, have Allah. the Hatiya of the Sharia. And the Mahdi of the Sharia, right? Wow. Yes. And then you have the Sharia of the tariq. Subhanallah. The tariq of the tariq, and so on. And it's not anything really complicated, it's just who we are. That's who humanity is, that's who we are. We are all that. Everything we read, the Quran is simply humanity. It's a mirror for us to look into. And to see, yeah, to see our, you know, <laughs> the rebel side and the angel side and the divine side, the divine center, but there's not a side. It's a center. We're, Allah says, you're on my side. So that's a term of affection. So the Sufis speak in words of love. Right. Because they find that's the best way to talk. Right. <laughs> yes. And so they say poetry. They sing songs. I'd like to sing you a few songs today oh. with our 
can't wait. Oh, you're going to sing all the way on. You can sing all the way on. This is your night. Well, you've been singing. Oh. So, um, I've been doing the spoken word. That's true, but that you've been singing it. Yeah. You sing when you talk, and that's beautiful. That's our secret. What? That's our secret. Our secret. So, it, really, the shake is like um, a nightingale. It's like any kind of, you know, we just listen and we listen, and finally that music coming from his tongue or her tongue is what finally tenderizes us and what fills us with love, finally. And so, stay close to the shake. <laughs> and the shake. Right? And the shake. You see, yeah. because, humbly law, this experience that we had a few weeks ago, it really sits with me. Shake Sufi was there. She, I was there. We were there. Oh, we, in Richmond. Uh, in Richmond. Yeah. yeah when no. the, what, what, what made it special Amazing. was not so much that we as individuals were there, but the representation yeah. of the Tariqa was there, of the Tariqa. We had Sheikh Abdul Khalid Jalani was there. We had Sheikh Abdul Bama was there. We had Sheikh Nuruddin Jarahi was there. We had Malana Jaraldin Rumi was there. We had Sheikh Abdul Norfai was there. We had Sheikh Moyedino Chisti was there. I mean, it was, this was a special occasion. But at that moment when I was there, I said, we're going to bring this same spiritual energy back to Brooklyn. And we're going to do it Brooklyn style. Uh huh? That was good. But what y'all getting ready to experience, y'all going to, inshallah, we are all going to remember for the rest of our lives. Because we got Shaq Sufi here. Oh, yeah. Now, you don't know this guy. He's a now, lover. No. <laughs> no. May I? May I introduce oh, please, him? Please introduce him. This me. guy here. <laughs> this character here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? When we was down in Virginia, this dude had everybody mesmerized. That's true. With love. In fact, they was wondering, because like me and him rolled in together. We rolled in gangster. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? When we rolled in, we rolled in gangster. Now they knew Sheikh Sufi. They're like, we know he a guy of love. But who this other character with him? They didn't bit more trust me than the man in the moon. Until they got to know me. Then not only did they trust me, but they were. Uh, that's very true. Yeah, your, your shake broke all our hearts open. <laughs> but it would not have been possible without Shaker, and it would not have been possible without Sheikh Sufi. When I say that I ain't had too many friends in my life, and I ain't. I've had companions, I've had crimies, I've had honchos, I've had wives. I ain't had too many friends. So I don't roll like that, because friend means something to me. It ain't just a word. Friend, when I think of friend, I think of Awali. There could be no friendship that's not connected to Awali. So when I say friend, it means something that goes deeper than just your, you know, your rolling partner, your associate. When I say this man right here is my friend. Mm, I mean. He my friend. He my friend. People be saying, man, you're an odd couple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's Oscar and who's Felix. But people say, you're an odd couple. Because this guy is pure, straight up love. I'm love too. But, but I don't believe in turning the other cheek. You smack me, I'm going to smack you back. That's just how I was raised. But I love you. I'm going to smack you back. This guy, I don't know. He might, he, he might really exemplify turning turn the other chick. I don't well, know. Well, let me tell a story. Please do. Sit down and tell a story. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just about what he said. Yeah. So, you know, they say the sultan would disguise himself. That's the sultan. Uh, who, anyway, whichever one it was, he disguised himself and went into the market. And um, he went with his vizier and he said, um, show me who the saints are, the friends of God are. 
and says, well, do you want to meet uh, an Isawi saint or a, a Mohammedan saint? And he said, I, I want to meet both. And so his vizier uh, and the sultan started walking through the market. And they came to um, a yogurt shop. And uh, the vizier walks in, unidentified, in camouflage, disguise. And he starts taking yogurts and spilling them on the ground like that. And, uh, and then the shop owner is just going like this. You know, yes, yes, that's okay, don't worry, don't hurt yourself, don't worry about it, I'll, I'll fix it, I'll make more yogurt, totally conceding. That's the level of tariqa that we were talking about. And then, so finally, okay, they, they have enough demonstration and they walk out, they fix him, they pay him uh, what the yogurt costs and the broken pots, and they say, okay, now I want to see the Mohammedan saint. So they go into another booth. So this is what you're saying. And they go in there, and it's a pot maker. And the minister, the vizier goes in, and he looks like he's accidentally uh, moves a pot off and it falls to the ground. As soon as that happened, the shopkeeper comes over and said, you stop that right away. I know who you are. They <laughs> say, so you put that back and you pay me the price. And they did. And then they walk out. And he says, well, my sultan, that's the Mohammedan saying. So, <laughs> they oh man. That's Rashid. Everybody got what they got. But I got what you were talking about. Yeah. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ash. Please do. Now, we went from Sheikah. I've been interrupted, but I'm just the 